That was cool. We made a quick stop at Brew House to wish our buddy Jonathan Vibrations a happy birthday. You might have seen some other faces you recognize. But now it's time to head to the Encore. Now it's time to get some poker in. I brought my friend Jamin with me. He's vlogging for with Gazzy B. Maybe at some point he'll jump on this another day. No, but it's like cool. the reason he did it mm -hmm. is so that his daughter can go through the vlog and literally see the li like what he was doing. That's why he puts so much effort into it. It's not even for the views or whatever. He doesn't care. Yeah. It's literally because he wants a storybook yeah. uh, in a comic book version of his journey in poker, which I'm like, I'm like, bro, I wish I was as good a person as you. Like, Ugh. I can't finish this vlog until I have trailer footage for the next vlog. So I need to get a session in. Jada. Yes? Hey, I need to step out for a few hours. Want to hang out with Lily and Ace for a while? Sure. Wait, are you going to go film your little videos that you think I'm going to watch when I get older? I like going to Lily's, but I assure you, I'm not going to watch your poker videos like, ever. <laughs> Most sessions on this vlog, I'm just playing to play. But sometimes, although rarely, I'm playing purely because I have no footage for the next time section of a vlog I'm editing, and thus, I need to go get footage. This was one of those times. I round up Jada, drop her off at Lillard's, and then hightail it down to the Encore. Okay, here's the deal. It's, uh, what is today? What is today? Sunday, March 18th. I'm walking out of the Encore parking garage because the wind parking garage is packed and um, we have to come in a different way. The plan today is to try to get some poker in, but not a lot, because we ain't got a lot of time. So let's hope we can make some things happen in four to five hours. Let's see how that works out. March Madness has started and the Encore is packed, poker room included. I called in prior to arriving, so it didn't take very long for me to get into a game. I do a quick scan of the table and recognize no one. This is normally a good thing. It skews the table towards being purely recreational players, which are much, much easier to play against because they rarely adjust. They have a strategy, they're going to play, and they're basically just going to stick to that strategy. Come hell or high water. Most of them were paying much more attention to the basketball game than the poker, to be honest. All that being said, it was 20 minutes or so before I really had a playable hand, and it's really nothing to write home about. Hijack, Button, and Small Blind limped to me, and I bump it up to $35 in the big blind with Ace-Queen offsuit. The Hijack calls in the Button and Small Blind fold. Pocket pair. He has a pocket pair like 90% of the time. This is my first thought. Queen, three, jack with two spades. On this particular board, I'm literally only concerned with pocket threes. That's it. That's not a lot to worry about. We lead into him for $25 just in case he's the type to get sticky with pocket sevens or something. He isn't. He folds right away. Like I said, nothing to write home about. A few hands later, I open Ace-8 offsuit in the cutoff to $20, and the only resistance I get, and I use that word very loosely, is the big blind. He defends. On a flop of King-10 Jack with two clubs, we bet $35 into 40-ish when check to. Mainly because as a pre-flop opener, this board is pretty good for us, and as the big blind defender, he potentially just has too many hands in his range to comfortably fight back for very long. Most of these players don't want to fight for pots. He folds. I know what I'm getting ready to say sounds counterintuitive, but I swear it's true. Folding is the key to making money in poker. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. 
Here I open King Jack Offsuit from the Low Jack to $20, which I'll do from time to time. And I get a call from the cutoff and the button. So far, so good. Pretty standard 2-5 stuff. I see a flop of King of Diamonds, 7 of Clubs, 9 of Hearts. Pretty decent flop. I have a pair, and it's hard to make a pair. I bet $35 in the cutoff calls. When the action is on the button, he raises to $135. 135. Guess what? I'm dead. Absolutely, unequivocally, dead. No worse king is doing this. Not even a draw is raising to the size versus the original opener and a caller. Ain't happening. They're just too tight. Easy fold here and the cutoff behind me folds as well and exposes his cards face up. King, queen suited. So one player is flatting pre with king, queen suited and the other expects me to believe he is raising lighter than that? Zero chance. Fold, 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 fold. Remember when I said folding is the key to making money in poker? Well, yeah, we don't always do what we should do. In this hand, I opened from the under the gun one spot to $20 with pocket threes, which honestly isn't a thing. That's mistake number one. This hand's just too weak. Should be a fold, but whatever. I open. It's not a death blow or anything. Let's move on. The small blind calls and the big blind now three bets to $75. Okay, so we opened a hand that we probably shouldn't open. Got three bet. Easy fold. Next hand, right? Well, not so fast. What if we call and flop a set? That's a thing, right? Mistake number two. We call. The small blind, much smarter than me, folds. We see a flop of, actually the important part isn't what is on the flop, the important part is what isn't on the flop. A three. A three isn't on the flop. The big blind continues for $85 and we do what we should have done about $95 ago. We fold. In this next hand, I, in the big blind, face a $20 open from the low jack. The only option not on the table here is folding. That would be bad. Calling is good. Raising is smart here sometimes too. We settle on a call and head to a flop. Four, nine, six with two spades. Not a bad flop. We have an overcard and a backdoor flush draw to go along with our bottom pair. In fact, one of the only things we don't have is the betting lead. We check. I expect a continuation bet here to come our way, and thus when the low jack bets $30, I'm not surprised. Call. The turn 10 of hearts increases our equity and we lead with another check. If the low jack tosses in a reasonably sized bet here, we're going to have to do some math. Math isn't necessarily fun. No math necessary because he checks it back. The eight of clubs puts a one liner to a straight on board and we really have no reason to bet here. We check again. If the low jack bets here, he's getting snap called. Rex love to bet these type boards. He avoids being snap called by checking. We open our hand and he quickly mucks his. Here, the hijack opens to $15 and we make a bad call from the small blind with ace 10 offsuit. I say bad call because it's just a losing play in general, but specifically versus this opponent, I felt I could offset the losses with enough wins to make this plus EV. Heads up, I see a flop of queen, jack, eight, rainbow. Decent flop, a lot of things going on here. I check. He continues for $30, which is a reasonable bet on this type board. Having an over card and a double gutter, I continue. The turn seven of hearts completes one straight, which we block. That's good. We check again. A good portion of the time, a queen will continue here. A set would continue here. To pair would also continue betting here. 
Wily players may check back here in order to snap off river bluffs, but this isn't a Wily player. He checks. The river five of diamonds means I just bricked everything. And although there is a world where ace high is just good here, there is a bigger world where he's holding pocket nines and can't call a lead. I think we're living in that second world. I lead for $60 and he folds before my chips even stop moving. It's at this point in the session where I just decided to capitalize on the nittiness of this particular table. Every one of them, to a man, was passive. None of them were really fighting for pots. At all. So guess what? Anything that I looked down at that it was even semi-reasonable became opens. Reasonable hands moved into becoming three bets. And light resistance was met with multiple barrels. Granted, I did manage to pick up some legit starting hands like Ace-King a couple times, but those were just good for display purposes. I was opening and raising with all sorts of hands during this period. Unsurprisingly, this tactic worked. 100% of the time. This is the greatest advertising opportunity since the invention of cereal. Extra sauce. Why am I here? Yeah. You know? Why? Why am I here? Like, I have things to do today. Uh, <laughs> I have things to do. Why are you here? I don't know why I'm here. I was off the chain and getting out of line. At one point while in the small blind, I told the table that I was going to raise or re-raise from the cutoff regardless. And I meant it. They just were not fighting back. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise the cutoff. When it gets to me in the cutoff, I'm raising. That's my last hand. Whatever happens. <laughs> like, we're bumping it up in the cutoff. Nice to meet you, man. Jamin? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Your, I love poker content. Oh, uh, okay. What's your name? Uh, Michael. Michael, it's nice to meet you, man. Really cool. It's like my second time here in Vegas. So yeah? Where are you from? Uh, San Jose, California. Oh, okay, yeah. You got here just in time to see me blast off in the nice. cutoff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is it. This is my hand. We're blasting golf right here. After this, yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, whatever happens, like, we're, we're blasting off right here. I just hope I get a good hand. A couple hands pass, and now I'm in the cutoff. Now I'm in the position where I had told the entire table I was going to open or three bet, and action folds to me. No one even limps in order to re-raise me. No one. I then look down at King Queen of Diamonds and open a $20. JB 
and 10. And everyone folds. Seriously? <laughs> okay, I'd seen enough. Time to wrap this one up. <laughs> right, no, right? All right, I'm out. That's like run bad. Like I set it up for like 10 minutes. That's a big sign. With this, with this session, um, we're done. <laughs> we are done with this session. We're going to get in the car. Um, we are going to head home, and I'm going to think of a way to creatively say that I didn't make a hand all day. That's what I'm going to do. I have a whole drive to figure it out. All day, like all session, I didn't make a hand. Like I barely had anything playable. <laughs> it's, oh my God. Patience, man. Like, I know you just have to be patient and have to wait for your spots, but come on. Queen six offsuit every hand? Seven three suited every hand? Towards the end there, towards the end, we were just like, F it, you know? That wasn't patience. I don't know what that was. <sighs> this session. You ready, kiddo? Okay, session's over and we are at Lillard's house and we'll just do the wrap up here. That um, session at the Encore was incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got no hands the entire time and <sighs> I came to the realization that those people we're tight and scared. So you know what we do? You know what we did because you saw what we did. We just started picking up hands and just started betting. We started betting everything. Jack 10, all suit, Jack four suited. We were just blasting away in some kind of way. We ended up down $9. The man you're looking at right now is $9 poorer than when I started the video. Do you hear that baby? Yeah, we're broke. <laughs> broke <laughs> so the coup de gras the chef's kiss of the entire night was the last hand i played i told the table when i was in the small blind that i was raising the cutoff regardless i said whatever happens i'm opening the cutoff if someone in front of me raises i'm three betting the cutoff if there's a three bet in front of me i'm four betting the cutoff so you know what happened you saw what happened it folded around to me in the cutoff, and I looked down at King Queen Suited. Easily the third best hand I've seen all night. The third best hand I'd seen in hours. King Queen Suited, I make it 20 bucks, they all fold, and in my mind, it's time to go. You have something to say? <laughs> Jada doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> So with that, we're gonna wrap up this vlog. If you like what you saw, then like the video. Um, what else do I say, Jada? You can talk. <laughs> if you like the videos, like the videos. Um, subscribe, leave me a comment. I will probably respond, unless you're trolling, then I'm just gonna probably ignore you. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Right. We are on the list for 2-5. We're on the list for 5-10. We're on the list for 5-10-20. We're on the list for 10-20-40. We're on all the lists. We're firing today.
On my wins, got you bugging. Cause I know you see my back when I'm running. Yeah, MVP got me stunting. I ain't walk this hard for none. Yeah, watch how I move. Watch how I put it on cruise. I hit different, can't do what I do. Okay, watch how I move. Big talk is on deck, don't snooze. All that talk, you better come in and lose. Yeah, watch how I move. Yeah, watch how I move. Yeah, watch how I move. Okay, watch how I move. Yeah, watch how I move. Yeah, watch how yeah, I move. Yeah, watch okay, how I check, move. Make my chest out, making moves. I can't hesitate. Yeah. Shooting like Curry, shooting that three on them. Let's celebrate. Okay, you say you got enough that mud, but really, would you stay? I, I call them dolls because I'm a real man. <laughs> and a real man isn't ashamed to call them dolls. Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near. So, we started this vlog off by going to the Brew Dog. Is that what it's called? Brew Dog? Meeting up with our buddy Johnny Vibes, wishing him a happy birthday in that. today is to get some poker pins. In four to five hours. Let's see how that works out. Check. Ace King. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh oh. What'd I do? <laughs> okay, so we met a while back. We played together a couple yeah. times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm teaching my wife how to play poker. <laughs> I was like, so what? Let's watch Jamin's videos. Oh, that's cool. I've been showing her. And she's like, is that Jamin? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Because I've been watching your videos. Yeah, that's awesome. Just a dead man. 